to the Nerdentials Podcast, starring your hosts, Joe Tweedy, Matthew Johnson, Nick Thomas, and Lynn Dungeon. Welcome to Nerdentials, your weekly dose of the nerdy essentials covering film, TV, video games, and comic books. I'm your host, Joe Tweedy. And joining me today is the Lynn Dudgeon. Heyo. Now, Lynn, at first glance or first earshot, I would have thought maybe he's hyped. But then I'm also thinking, well, maybe we're starting late. And then I thought, oh, no, does Corona got him by the neck? Ah, no. <laughs> oh, we should not laugh at that. <clears throat> However, you have to be a hell of a chain there to get Corona to the middle of nowhere. It's true. You are in a very peculiar spot of of a desert like landscape, and so that makes sense. Uh, yeah. Me, I'm I'm sandwiched between Washington and California, and they've been on lockdown for a while, and Oregon just. Recently, finally, got the order to stay at home, they say. Um, it's really weird. If, it's weird that they, uh, you know, the... Uh, okay, I, I was about to make a, a, yeah. <laughs> a political yeah. joke. I'm I'm not going there. We don't like to go there, guys. We like to keep our show lighthearted uh-huh. and fun. We like to keep things hopeful. Um, and in a time like this... I think we need to imbue additional hopeful feelings in se- in said times, right? Ooh. Ooh. We <laughs> send the hope. <laughs> We're going to usher in the hope digitally, guys. And, you know, now's the best time to be putting out this content because Lord knows me and Lynn were contemplating, man, how are we going to keep doing our show now that we're stuck at home? And I was like, oh, oh, yeah, we do this from home already. <laughs> yeah. Not to poke fun Crazy. at a lot of other shows, a lot of other podcasts we listen to um do things in studios a lot of the time and a lot of them have had to now Skype their podcasts and it's so weird that we're we're already pretty well practiced on that front, so Yeah. Right? <laughs> we got this on we got this on lock. We'll be all right. We got it more on lock than this current pandemic. Oh, snap. Oh, yeah. Um, that being said, though, uh, guys, we uh, we do just want to take a quick moment um, just to share some hopeful, thoughtful sentiments that this is a serious time and it is a crazy time in our world. And the best thing we can do for those that are stuck at home is to entertain you guys, give you guys some fun, enjoyable listening or viewing times. Um, And especially, I mean, three weeks in now, you guys have probably watched everything on Netflix, so you're going to need some new content, am I right? Oh, jeez. No, there's no way you've finished everything on Netflix, although props to you if you have. I, but <laughs> that being Congratu- said, congratulations! And, and the award goes to you, you, and you <laughs> out there. Yeah. But that being said, though, guys, this is going to be. It's just me and Lynn today. Uh, Matt and Nick are in good spirits, and they are in good health. They've told me uh, tonight, as of this recording time, they're just currently unable to record tonight uh for various different reasons and that's okay nothing to do with sickness thankfully um but guys that we're gonna we me and lynn decided off air that we were gonna make this a little more game centric since me and lynn are we're all gamers um lynn just hasn't had a lot of time to enjoy a lot of tv or movies so but he does I'm get a lot of ga- gamer. But he gets a lot of gaming in. So figured 
might as well, if it's just the two of us, might as well be the best time ever to do that. Um, quick side note, anyone that's watching on our YouTube channel right now, uh, Lynn's background is going to probably, presumably appear the same as always, because that typically doesn't change. But you notice behind me, the shelves behind me are quite barren from the traditional pop culture collection of toys, mm -hmm. uh, adult toys. Sorry, that was... Nope, that's... Let me reword that. Uh, collectibles. Yes. No, adult toys. Adult toys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Whips and cheeks and such. Adult collectibles, such as action figures and comic books. Those things are seemingly disappearing from behind me. Uh, I am... Um, Lynn, I realize that I don't know that if I've shared this with Nick yet. I feel like I have. I don't know if he knows I'm moving. Maybe. <laughs> Matt does, and that was a very hmm, conversation because he, he was unaware up until a couple days ago. Uh, mm. So I'm going to leave this in for humor's sake. Uh, hopefully Nick and Matt, I know they... Eh, moving on. We're just... Anyway... We'll see how things go, but uh, to our listeners out there, I am moving from Oregon. Uh, the pandemic aside, de uh, you know, dependent on how things go, assuming um, state individual borders don't shut down. Uh, me and my oh. family, me and my family are uprooting from Oregon, and I'm moving to a sandier place. Maybe closer to Lynn. Hint, hint. Nudge, nudge. Know what I mean? Anyway. Or this to my house. One way or the other. Hey. One of those. You know, it's, in all honesty, listeners, it's just uh, jobs are changing. Times are changing. Pandemics are happening. Joking aside, I am uh, going to be moving in the next few weeks. But... Do not worry, fear not, listeners and viewers. Our YouTube content will continue throughout. I'm put, uh, me personally, I'm pushing through several gaming series right now, uh, and as best we can, we're going to maintain our podcast uh, on the weekly basis, like we have been. So, guys, it, it, that's why my background's a little different. Uh, Either way, things are happening, things are moving, but the content shall continue is my hope and goal to all our listeners and viewers out there. Um, Definitely, hopefully for the better. Hopefully for the better. I do see some improved uh, increase in content over the next few months, uh, probably post-move. So, mid-summer. Well, not midsummer. Let's say from May going forward, hopefully. That, that movie is terrifying. Midsummer. <laughs> nice callback, so nice up. reference, sir. But, yes. Good on you, yeah. sir. That being said, guys, uh, we've probably wasted enough of our viewers' time and our <laughs> listeners at home. We should probably get to a, f a little bit of the meat and bones of our conversation tonight. What do you, what do you say, Lynn? Yeah, I'm done. That's it. So, guys, um, it's not the normal news variety that you're used to. This is a game-centric episode, but come next week, we're going to dive into a wider variety of pop culture. So, bear with us, but all you hope, gaming hope nerds out there... have a few other people there. Yes, that is definitely the plan, Lynn. More people involved. But until then, guys, let's jump into Gaming Bits. Guys, welcome yeah. to Gaming Bits. We are here on the fly. We have notes, some notes, uh, a smattering of notes in front of us, really stats, bullet points. Things I did not procure, but did find online. So we're oh. kind of riding by the seat of our pants tonight, Lynn. Ooh, I like the seat of my pants. I got some nice pants. Do you? I hear the uh, the, the seating of the... Anyways. 
<laughs> I hear you have some good quality pants. Let's leave it at that. So first you know up, it? Lynn, one of the bigger yes. to- one of the bigger topics I wanted to have a little conversation on, a little back and forth, if you will, is okay. we're a little late on the topic as far as it being news worthy, but we're not okay. late on the relevancy of it because the the they're not really the, shit. The co- well, the COVID nineteen, the coronavirus, has impacted a lot of things up front. Long term, we can speculate and don't truly know what those impacts are going to be in the coming months. But up front, we do have at least a glimpse and possibly an assessment we can suss out of this conversation as to what some of the effects are right now uh, things that have happened things that have been canceled shut down i mean the word shut down is kind of heavy right now because it's seemingly everything is shutting down but and sorry in advance sorry to everyone who is a season ticket holder or <laughs> bought tickets to any nba game or any sporting event yeah any sporting event well especially the nba at if I remember right, they're not going to refund anybody's money. I've heard as much across, uh, across the interwebs. Um, I apologize wah, wah, wah. to you folks. Yeah. If I had the money, I would refund your tickets, but I don't. So, uh, Vote for Lynn 2040. Assuming the world lives that long. I, yeah, I, right. I was assuming the age you would have to be to, you know, uh, be president. I think you have to be, oh. uh, I think you well, have to be into your forties to, you have to be, you know what I mean? That whole angle of, yeah. you, know, you have to be in your forties somewhere around there. I don't remember the age, but somewhere in your forties to be, uh, voted for presidency. That being said, yeah. joking aside, <laughs> remember <Yeah>. Lynn, <laughs> In 2020, because yeah. 2040 is around the corner, assuming we don't all die from this. Joking aside. Well, in 2040, if I am in the ballot. <laughs> joking aside, though, uh, our, our sentiments do go out there to all the people who have had invested interest in things coming out in the world that have now been shut down. Yeah, it's it's old news now. Because every day something new comes up with this pandemic in full force, things oh, more things it, shut it, down. Ugh. Not even just the pandemic, but 2020 in general. It's been like, I, I think one of those crazy hold my beer kind of years. You think it's bad now? Wait till next week. Hold my beer. Or. Uh... Not sure if I'm going to work tomorrow, but wait till tomorrow. Hold my beer. <laughs> yeah, like because right. I mean, because that's that's kind of how it is right now. The only the only businesses allowed to stay open are government based necessities, food based things, medical based things. Companies like that are are being allowed to stay open with parameters of stay six feet away from each other. Wash your hands. I'm not making a joke about this. I'm just I'm throwing things oh, out there as yeah. far as like how the state of everything is right now. Um, or when it gets like super weird about it, where I work now, <laughs> uh, which is like how how is that relevant? But well, okay, okay, it, it, I I'll I'll let you, you be know. as vague or whatever you want to be, but I would yeah. I, w- I wouldn't call out any company names, but. You're saying you're, you're well, but you're not working constantly in proximity with hundreds of people, are you? Or are you pretty self-contained with what you're There's, doing? There is 13 people on my crew, so it's like, you know, but you're not, you're not we shoulder have, to shoulder. We have kinda, yeah. On on a shovel, yeah, you got to be pretty close to each other. Yeah. Uh. I work. I work in industrial production. Um, I, you would think similar situation, but the crew I work on is pretty sparse. There's a probably double the amount of people you're working with, 
but we're in a very large warehouse and we're very spread apart from each other and not to go into specifics, but we're deemed necessary because we do things for aerospace and government based contracts that we've been allowed. I'm doing air quotes guys in the video if you're not seeing us right now, but we're being allowed to continue processing un until further notice because we're deemed a necessary or needed uh, production, but and see the company that I work for makes money for the government. Air quotes, uh, right? We we're, we won't go into into it, but yeah, it is what it is. Uh, and but that being said, aside from that, like just pop culture wise, industry wise, the things we talk about, Lynn, on a personal interest level, outside of our personal lives. Like, let me just let me just throw the uh, a couple lists of things out there that we won't dive into. But like, I we've heard constant delays on movies coming out that that are that were going to come out, but well, they're but but theaters are shut down because gatherings of more than a couple people anywhere is now yeah, being banned but, most places. Yeah, exactly. But on the same token, certain certain companies are releasing them early access online like Disney and onward. I know we, we downloaded oh. that one and we watched it. Oh, see now that, well, that, no, that's, that's true. See, the thing is, is that before the, like the, before the theater shutdowns started actually mm -hmm. happening, onward came out literally two weeks before the shutdown. And yeah, which, which is kind of, but... it's tragic for some of those films. It's there it's a plus to us as consumers like, yay, we get early access and we're stuck at home. And I, yeah. we, we can appreciate some of those companies. We can appreciate Disney throwing some things on their streaming service early. Like I know you paid for onward, but I think the first week of April, they're going to add it to Disney plus <laughs> because they're trying well, to get, they're trying to get what sales they can get from on demand. Yeah. And then they're eventually adding it to streaming, which it, it's inevitable because I mean, how else are they going to make anything off of it? You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, on our, on our end, we'd still like to support it because it's, it's an area that we do enjoy and the oh, kids yeah. enjoy the movie. No, For like sure. on a side note, I, is troll, is trolls dream work. Does DreamWorks put out? Yes. trolls? Okay. So yes. they're not Disney. Uh, you know, me and Amy, we personally love a lot of Disney stuff, but uh, Trolls, my two older girls are so obsessed with that yeah. that film, the, that franchise, that when the uh, World Tour Trolls, the third one, I think second or third one that comes out now. Um, it, it's the second. Yeah, I thought so. So the, when the second one comes out, my wife already told me we're buying it the day it becomes available. Like it was going to come out in theaters, but they've already because theaters are going to be shut down till at least the fall, if if things even start getting better by the fall. No one, because that's the other thing is that aside from even when they lift the ban on gatherings, people are not going to immediately flock to theaters. Like a lot of podcasts I've listened to have speculated the same that, like okay, you know, massive shutdown. No one can be around each other because the pandemic is such a big deal. And then suddenly, hey, people are getting better or we got a vaccine or whatever happens where things are getting better and they lift the ban and start allowing people to, to meet back up in public areas. I don't see a large, massive number of people flocking to theaters first day of August. You know what I mean? People are going to be hesitant, like with any any major world event, any pandemic that's of similar, you know, we personally have never in our lives had to deal with this until now. So this is very historical for a lot of people our age, including our children. I mean, I'm not neglecting people that live in countries where there's tornadoes and hurricanes. I'm not, you know, yeah. but... but this is one of the few historical uh, things that have happened globally because it's not just happening in our state; it's happening worldwide. Like, or if you're any one of those weirdos like me that's afraid of large crowds and big aside, gatherings. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> in introverts aside, with the exception of those who are 
naturally dispositioned to not want to be in large crowds. The yeah. the average public that does go to a movie theater might not flock to theaters the moment the ban lifts up for lockdown. You know what I mean? And so yeah. a lot of movies that were going to come out in the summer have been pushed to the fall. And I think that's just a lot of the studios hope, air quotes, hope that that it'll be a good time to try to make a few bucks back on their multi-million dollar film investments. But I think DreamWorks, yeah. I think DreamWorks is just completely decided to nix the Trolls 2 movie coming out to theaters. And the moment they were going to release it, they're just going to sell it on demand automatically. I think that's what well, they, they I, came I, out and said, you know? I feel like right here is going to be like the make or break for that aspect of the streaming service industry is the home theater release. Like if, if this is successful and they actually see a large income, I, I feel that it might be a more viable option for movies that come out in the future. That was, like that, people, yeah. You know, holy crap. We made a shit ton of money off just releasing it you know, to home access, why not just do that in the future? And then, you know, now that that is a viable option, you might see that as a thing from now on. Like they're like, why do we even need to go to theaters? People are spending all this money on home theater systems. You may like Lynn, you make a really good segue for me and, and make a really good point that, that complete, like, yeah, we, we went on a brief tangent on film, and granted, we're going to be talking games here, but this totally yeah. applies to what's happened with the gaming industry this this last month and the yeah. upcoming months. Um, For sure. The main... The main... I mean, it, it was like when, when games first became of digital access, it, you're seeing hard copy media fall off the face it's just it's it's more easy readily right. available and it, you know like a disc or a cartridge is easily damaged and it's really hard to damage a file unless you you know you either corrupt it or you manipulate it in one way or another well and then think it's, from the from the industry side of it as far as profits go that's that yeah. much less plastic that they have to print and ship exactly I mean, and i mean yeah yeah from the look at it now you can either be positive about it which it's it's nice that you have the digital media and it's it's great or you can look at it from other people's point of views that you're you're buying the rights to it and that's kind of not a alleyway i want to go down right now right but you, you can be negative about it or you can be positive. Hey, this is this is a good direction. It's digital. You get access to it instantly and you can download it based on your provider, whatever. I mean, my provider kind of kind of sucks. Not going to knock it too hard, but it's, you know, it's it's easy and it is. I don't know. It. it it, it it's comfortable and easy. We'll go with that. We, I mean, Lynn, there's there's a very wide, like, topical discussion that that can take place, uh, and we'll cover some of it today. But there's, r- regarding there's, there's, there's I mean, there's like, a negative alley. There's there's a negative alleyway, and I know all of the arguments there. I just I don't want oh. to go down that alley. No, yeah, and, and and I mean, just to bullet point a couple without talking about them, we'll talk. We'll we'll I'll, I'll throw these things out there. We'll we'll say, uh, no matter who you uh, subscribe to, no matter what uh, service you use, there's uh, data caps. There, uh, especially with the next generation of consoles pushing 4K 60 frames, those games are not going to come under a hundred gigs. Oh, and and coming ray tracing, holy crud! Well, now the ray tracing thing, thankfully, uh, on the out outskirts of most things, at least on the Xbox side, uh, and I think the same for Sony, is it's going to be 
hard hardware based and so it's not going to rely on the physical file size to take place it's going to be more of code written in to access i don't know code i don't know game development but i do know it's going to come from a hardware it's, level so yeah but the, i mean but when we're talking about textures when we're talking about like physical textures and resolutions those do physically come in at a certain file size they, they, they will be larger based on manipulation yeah so oh yeah and i'm not discounting your ray tracing point i'm i'm just trying to add a add a, add a point that maybe alleviates yeah. a little bit of it but it's going to be a massive file size no matter what it it will be and i mean a lot of them are going to do well we can get into it so just yeah let, when we get into specs and stuff on other things. So let me just let me just briefly ask you then because the point you made about the movie industry and how we'll depending on how home releases turn out, maybe theater releases become fewer and far between in the next in the coming years. But after you know, depending on how this I, all pans out, I and I kind of feel that they will end up like the drive-in movie theater and i'm kind of sad because you know as a kid i enjoyed the drive-in movie theater with mom and dad or well dad for the most part but it's i i think they'll end up that route where you'll you'll slowly see them end up like blockbusters or hollywood videos where they just fall off well and i think for a long time that was the theater's fear uh, once streaming first came out, when blockbusters and Hollywood videos started closing their doors, a lot of theaters yeah. were trying to push the envelope with like 3D and and 4XD and like what can we do to make the experience and and introducing beer. People were they start a lot of a lot right there. A lot of movie theaters just... now offer beer and. You know, order your food here while sitting in the theater. A lot of theaters are pushing to do that because they're trying to be like, how can we make this special enough that it make that it gives you enough reason to leave your home? And yeah, but let's let me segue over to the gaming industry because that was the primary topic I wanted to ask you, Lynn. Yeah. Is with with all these big huge events closing, like E three was one of the ones oh. one of the ones we heard. Yeah. We were waiting on the longest time because the GDC closed down. Um, we probably figured that some of the PAX events were going to close, and we were just waiting to hear um, if E3 most was going to... Most of the PAX happened on earlier on in the year, didn't they, though? Uh, PAX West hasn't happened yet. Uh, it happens in the fall oh. and probably will close. Yeah, PAX East did happen. It happened before the pandemic yeah. came in full force. Yeah. Um, or PAX South. I might be getting those two wrong. Uh, leave a comment down below, guys, and correct me if I'm wrong. But one of those two, East or South, uh, did did happen. And West, uh, which often is known as uh, PAX Prime back in the day because it was one of the first ones to launch, uh, yeah. may not happen because that's based in Seattle. And right now Washington is on as much of a full lockdown as California. So I know they did, they did cancel soccer con this year, which whether or not you're an anime fan. Well, and, and comic con, all, all those are going to probably be shut down this year. Yep. Yeah. I, um, I do know that the, that the soccer con, the page for it most of the organizers did ask the vendors to post links to their like whether they had an online store or like an etsy mm -hmm. so that they could continue that revenue stream there and the support for those booze that would happen which right. is kind of cool that's cool yeah um the thing with E3 that I wanted to just quickly lay out um, that I've heard others talk about so far is uh, Sony pulled out last year and they were not, even before the shutdown happened, Sony was not planning on being there this year either. And for all intents and purposes, Sony has kind of decided that E3 is, is has become something that 
is not is too costly and not beneficial to them personally and they do have their own personal event that they did put on last year where they you know what i mean it's that's, what is it called that, um that's the thing now it's a thing they're not i if i remember correctly they said in a press release that they're not going to attend e3 any longer because of their convention yeah it's well because a f- Two or three years ago, E3 was just a media and developer conference. No outside public was allowed in. And prior to that, all PAX West, PAX South, East, all of those were met, were designed to do the same thing E3 does, but be consumer-centric. It was meant for fans of gaming to go and it was a big place for indie developers to really flourish in showcasing their upcoming projects. E3 was meant, it had a lot of indie developers making connections, but it was primarily designed for the big industries, Nintendo, Sony, Sega at the time, now Microsoft, and and others, to literally showcase their stuff to the media for news coverage, and only recently did they open up the last day or two to the public where I could buy a ticket and just go there as a fan. Yeah. And well, they, I mean, and they, even, you know, and they got a huge turnout uh, last year when they completely opened it up to the public for that. Um, and I think that was the reasons of one of the, one of the many reasons Sony decided to bow out because it was no longer just about coverage and developer I, talk. And Sony also gets way more viewership of the fan base when they hold their own event. Here, I I don't want to just throw Sony under the bus here, but oh, I'm not throwing them under the bus by saying this. I was leading into uh, no. Doesn't Nintendo also do their own thing as well? Nintendo still shows up at E3 every year. They showed up last year and they were planning but, on having hold on, they were planning on having a booth this year, but they still do their big presentation from a pre-recorded it's called Nintendo Direct and they've been doing it for the last 2 years. Yeah. And they have all but given themselves no reason to be there either other than for just the fluff of what E3 is. Microsoft yeah. doesn't even isn't even on the showroom floor of E3. They actually own the theater that's attached to the building where they have E3. And so it's actually a Microsoft event that just happens in a building next to E3. And they've done that for the last two years. And a lot of people don't realize that, but Microsoft does have it during the E3 event. They do have it at a set time, and they have for the last couple of years but it is in their own personally owned theater. So essentially they've been doing what Sony is doing now, but they just kept it connected to E3 still. And now all of them in light of the pandemic and E3 canceling, all of them have said, uh, Phil Spencer posted a couple weeks back that they would still be doing an E3 presentation. Uh, they didn't announce a specific time or date, but a lot of us can assume It's going to be around the time that they probably would have presented at E3, but it's going to all be hosted on Xbox.com. It'll be on their official website where the presentation does show up in June. And Sony hasn't announced a date yet, but they will also probably do a digital presentation and Nintendo will continue doing their Nintendo Direct Like they've been doing, they just won't have a presence physically anywhere because of all these cancellations. Um, Mm. So my question, Lynn, is the speculation right now is if everyone has access digitally and everyone's forced to just have to tune in online and watch these presentations and and it does really well and there's a lot of feedback, is E3 going to be relevant next year they they they, is it the esa i forget the company that runs e3 but they've stated publicly that their intention is to come back next year you know when 
post pandemic and they they plan on still trying to push for E3 2021 but Sony's been successful showcasing their own stuff now to you know a whole year outside of this thing Microsoft technically does their own presentation as well as Nintendo and they don't technically need this hey everyone get together in one spot for it so I'm kind of I don't know I mean, a lot of it's kind of, in my mind, it's kind of a 50-50, like, it, maybe E3 is relevant, but is it really after, in light of this? With the shutdown, if they're successful online, do you think Dude, any of these no, big names it, are going to want to even come back next year? I feel like it would still be a thing. Uh, the, I guess I the, the, the detail to throw at you is, I don't know the actual cost, but I do know that a lot of speculation last year was that Sony didn't have anything at the time big enough to show off to justify paying for a spot at E3 because I guess it's extremely expensive to rent out a space at E3. And, and you know... That, and, that, may be, that may be a thing, but I don't think conventions will... At least I'd hope from a naive point of view that conventions wouldn't die. I don't, I'm not, it's, it's yeah. still, it, it, I mean, I feel like if they were to die, that would kind of be a big hit to the indie developer. Oh no, absolutely. I think the biggest, the, the number one concern isn't whether or not Microsoft and Sony or Nintendo will survive not going back to an E3 I definitely think that oh. all, all these event, all these other like these PAXs that are being canceled are huge opportunities for indie developers to make connections with bigger names and I do think they're going to have a harder time not having these conventions this year. Yeah. Epic Games Store will be quick to swoop everybody up. But... <laughs> there there will be companies <laughs> that reach personal, out. That's a, a personal quote there. No, I didn't hear any negativity out of that. <laughs> but it, no, no, no. Like, if I'm being fair, I, I don't think that E3 will die. I think that it'll, it'll still be there, and it, it will still. I mean, as long as I don't know how to word it. It's just. If there's a community, if, if if there's a community there, it it'll happen, and it's gonna happen. Gaming is too big of a community for it not to happen. I mean, it doesn't matter what game you play or what genre you're into. It's it's gonna be a thing because you're gonna want to know what's new, what's next, and what's upcoming. You know? Right. I I guess the all that all that being the same, but it's just. Yeah. I guess a lot of people are just wondering like as well. Now that's why we have PAXs. Like the PAXs are meant for the, that community connection, but E3 has, has up until this point, they've been pushing to try to become based on the direction they've changed, opening it up to the public. I feel like, there's still an industry convention that's trying to become a community PAX event and they just, they haven't made full turn yet on making that be a thing because uh, uh, the I, biggest concern when people flooded the gates at E3 a year ago, two years ago was yeah. there weren't hundreds and hundreds of demo booths like you would find at a PAX. A PAX is meant for the general public to have hundreds of consoles and a, uh, hundreds of people are able to sample things at the same time. Whereas E3 has always been long ass lines. Uh, you know, the, the journalists get to skip to the front of the line, go behind closed doors for interviews and stuff while other industry people wait in line or, you know, smaller people, whatever. And it's always been a limited, like there's never been like a massive number of, of, of demo consoles out on the floor and that's what PAX yeah. has always been known for. And I think E3 physically has to make a lot of changes if they're going to shift to a PAX community-style event, I guess, is the, about, is, the, is the idea. 
how about we do it this way? E3 is for AAA, and PAX can stay indie. Does that work for you? I mean, that would work for me. I think it's it's. I don't. I don't think it's it's up to us as to why they've tried to open it up to the public. I think they think they can make a few extra bucks because PAX does so well. Because here's the thing: is like uh, most of the PAXs are three times bigger in sheer number of people showing up at, at E3. The, uh, I think it's the GDC or Gamescom. Gamescom, which already happened, I think. It didn't have to get canceled. It happened earlier in the year or end of the year. I can't remember when Gamescom happens. But Gamescom is like five times larger than E3. It's the biggest. Like People don't talk about it much until now. But since E3 started making shifts and trying to be larger, um, a lot of people have been talking about the fact that people don't realize Gamescom is so huge. 100,000 something, couple hundred thousand people go there and only 15, 17,000 people go to E3 every year. Like that's all the space they have for. The Gamescom I think is in Germany. And they usually have over a hundred thousand people go to that event, developers and public, and journalists. Mm-hmm. Like IGN goes there every year, and a bunch of other journalists, a big name journalist, go there. And it's one of the biggest gaming events, it, like in the world, as far as number of people that go. Um, and I think Microsoft made an interesting move where at Gamescom. That's where they decided to reveal the Xbox Series X, the physical body. Like, when we saw that first trailer, it premiered at Gamescom. Not at E3, not a personal event. And, like, I remember reading an interview uh, where Phil Spencer was uh, shared the story of how he was talking to his PR person and, and saying, we need to do something bold and something different. And... You don't get a console reveal at Gamescom. Usually it's just about the games that are coming out and and that's it. But this is the... Microsoft was the first um, console company... Not They're not a console company, but, but Xbox... The Xbox side of Microsoft. This is They were the first ones to actually do like an actual console tease at a place like Gamescom, which is not known for console rele- you know, teases. <clears throat> so that also brings in the question with PAX West and other PAXs being so huge for the community and Gamescom literally being like the globally biggest event for games. Does E3 survive this closure? You know, I mean, from a speculative point of view, I, I, I agree with you, Lynn, though, aside from those details I added that I think, they will still push to to come back next year, regardless. And they and, and they've yeah. said as much this year that they plan on doing some kind of digital thing this year. I don't know who they have involved. I mean, Nintendo does their own thing. Sony does their own thing. Microsoft maybe partners with them on some front for a digital thing, but Microsoft hasn't said anything connecting to E3, they have said that they're going to do their own presentation on their website. So I wonder what E3, the people that run E3 are planning on doing as far as doing a little showcase. I shrug my shoulders too, because I have no idea. I'm like, what are they going to present? I just, (laughs) I, I, I don't think it'll end. It'll be, it'll be a thing. As long as there's money, it'll be a thing. Agreed. Just something to just something to contemplate, something for our listeners and viewers to think about too. Got yeah, the gamers out there. Um, it, yeah. If our listeners haven't been keeping up with other shows like I do, um, this is all still pretty relevant and new because of the pandemic. But, um, Lynn. That being said, uh, I think. Uh, our closing topic that I don't, we're going to try not to drag this out too long, but yeah. I kind of wanted to present cause we're, we're about 45 minutes right now in the recording. I figured we could do a 15, 20 minute talk about 
how Xbox yeah. and Sony ha- have revealed for all intents and purposes the full line of specs for their respective consoles. Yep. And and who better to discuss this than a veteran Sony player and a Microsoft fanboy? Oh, uh, I uh, mm-hmm. hashtag or not hashtag. Um, I'm gonna at Nick. Love you, Nick. <laughs> Sorry you couldn't be here for this, but I and, and not not to disrespect any of our other hosts, but I I was this is kind of like probably the best uh, two person conversation we could have. <laughs> it, 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 with with yeah. with the most neutrality, the least amount of yeah. bashing to happen in discussion of how neutrally how do we feel these two consoles stack against each other without getting too volatile. I guess was my point. Again, yeah. love you, Nicholas. And but uh, <laughs> if we're if we're aiming for keeping the conversation short, it would be best between the two of us. But that that's all I was getting at. I. I we 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 love our brothers in arms, uh, but some of them are uh, haters of certain products. And I just wanted a very general, neutral discussion on what is stacked here. I do look forward to his thoughts later, and I will talk to him at a later time. Just because I love I love all all my buddies' opinions, regardless of how <laughs> wild, extravagant, or off color they are. I don't mind. I do love hearing people's passions and thoughts, but, and Lynn, you are a veteran Sony player. And so you do still have some heart in the game as far as how you feel they're going to do stacked up to what they've shared so far. So that being said, I'm just going to read pretty broadly, uh, just the specs that are, that were listed and put out there into the ether as far as Microsoft and Sony are concerned. So, just start off with the the people that released their... Well, okay, to be fair, Sony released their specs pretty early, I think in January, in a, a Wired magazine, yeah. a magazine article that they exclusively released yeah. to Wired. Um, yeah. And then Microsoft recently, in the last month, came out with like the their full everything. Just like, hey, this is what the box can does or can, could do. Yeah, they, they and laid then, it out. On the table. They laid it out on the table, and then less than a week later, Sony came out with a full presentation that me and Lynn have stipulated probably was meant for GDC for more of a developer perspective. Uh, Because they kind of gave a lot of just raw numbers as far as what their system can do. Um, But that being said, I'm going to list off the Xbox Series X first simply because they laid it out on the table to the consumer. huh? What you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to go... So take a number from Xbox and then lay it side by side to Sony. Okay. We can do that. So, yeah, we grab can a number here. Whatever's first, grab it and then grab the number from Sony. Okay. Okay. Lynn is suggesting a direct stat by stat comparison, which I don't think I've heard any podcasts actually do. I'm sure there's articles that have done as much, but uh, we haven't had a direct line for line comparison here. So, I've got both articles pulled up. <laughs> There's a few things here that I would like to point out, sure. and it's not—it's not negating anything, but it's just to say for synergy's sake. Yeah. So we're gonna stack the CPU side by side. So. Yeah, there's a good one. Uh, also, this is a, a very. Uh, probably written by different people, possibly, but both articles I have pulled up from TechRadar.com. One is specifically on the Xbox. The other article is just on the PS5. But they were written out very similarly as far as all the stats are there. So, same source, different stats. The Xbox, the the future Xbox, the CPU, is going to be an 8X Zen 2 cores at 3.8 gigahertz. 
uh, which is uh, or three point six gigahertz with, I think, multi threading or something yep. like that. Uh, but okay, so a Zen two core three point eight gigahertz. And next up to Sony, the PS five is going to be running an AMD Zen two based CPU with eight cores at three point five gigahertz variable frequency. So <laughs> clocking speed wise, Xbox is a little higher, but it all depends and and, and the discussion will continue throughout these stats is yeah. there uh there there is going to be one that that is stronger than the other by just sheer numbers, but it all depends on how the developers of the individual games utilize these components. Cause a lot yeah. of the computer power comes in being able to fully, you know, outsource what, go, what, what is being worked on by what components into these games. And it's, it's a weird thing. If you guys aren't developers, we're not, yeah. I just I do know that is an aspect of game development. Just for time's sake and argument's sake, just throw the throw the raw numbers out there. Oh no, I know. I w- I wasn't going to. I just I was throwing right. that out there up front, and then I was right. going to streamline the rest of this yeah. here. Okay. Okay. For for the sake of comparison, what is the difference between the two as of right now in the CPU? Uh, 3.8 gigahertz for Xbox, 3.5 for the Sony. So a higher clock speed by very little, depending on the core threading and what gets used. But basically, Microsoft is only incrementally faster on the clock speed. GPU, okay. when we when they're throwing out teraflops. Yes, Microsoft Good. does come out on top on the number for this with 12 teraflops, 52 CUs at 1.825 gigahertz with a custom RDN, okay. RDNA 2. Okay. Sony has 10.28 teraflops at 36 CUs and 2.23 gigahertz. So higher clock speed, but about 30% less teraflops in, in total power. Roughly, uh, memory. No, they, no, no, hold on. on. On this instance, it is we're talking for uh, teraflops. Sony is less, correct? Yeah, Sony's ten point two eight. Microsoft is twelve. What is the pri? Does does the article that you have set the prioritization on there? No. No? Okay. We'll leave that one alone. No. We, we're going to talk about teraflops later. Um, <laughs> for system memory, Xbox has 16 gigs of RAM, of GDDR6 RAM. And, and Sony is going to also be rocking 16 gigs of GDDR6. And, and they threw in 256-bit on the tail end of that. I don't know why there's that difference, but they're both rocking 16 gigs of GDR GDDR six Ram. Ram. It's a solid state. Uh, that's just the Ram. We're going to get to storage in a minute. Oh, okay, uh, okay. yeah. Microsoft is going to, con- is going to be rocking a 4k UHD Blu-ray drive. Okay. Sony. Is going to be rocking also a 4K UHD Blu-ray drive as well. Um, they, some of these stats are a little off here. Um, I might have to... Okay, let's look up... Where is the drive? Okay, storage. Here we go. For physical storage, Microsoft is going to rock a 1 terabyte custom NVMe solid state. And mm-hmm. Sony... Is going to be rocking a crazy custom 825 gigabyte SSD. Now, the thing is with online tests, I just have to put in a footnote here Microsoft and Sony are both rocking custom solid states that are uniquely and um, what's the word? proprietarily designed, meaning 
you can't just plug in an aftermarket nope. solid state and hope it works because it won't. Nope. Let me stop you there. Microsoft is the only one that's doing it. Sony is allowing you to swap out. They said. Okay. That is correct from my memory. Regardless, though. No, it, that's that's one little thing. Not regard. I don't. I'm not. No, hold on. I'm still going to expound upon it. When I say regardless, I don't mean I'm moving on from that. I'm. I, I meant regardless of your point. Uh, okay. In addition to your point, let me rephrase that. The NVMe w- will be required to run any Xbox Series X current gen games that are made for the Series X. Now, yeah. hold on. Microsoft has said for the first year, for the entire first year till fall 2021, there will be no exclusive games to the Series X, meaning all games, including Halo Infinite that comes out this fall, will be playable on an original Xbox One. That being said, well, my, hold on. That being said, well, no, I'm, I'm not trying to negate your argument. What I'm trying to say is that although Sony is allowing you to use secondary, if you do plan on using a secondary, if it is not comparable or greater than, it will not be able to function on PlayStation 5 game setups. So you will suffer that speed decline on yes. load times. Yes. Fair so enough. It, yes. In, in, in Xbox's like defense, they are making it proprietary to keep speeds even across the board. But for Sony, what they're looking at is they're allowing you to put in other other forms of memory or hard drive space. Yeah. Just you unless you put equivalent or better mm-hmm. you won't be able to enjoy the load times that you did have from the solid state built in right uh as a footnote that, as a footnote from Microsoft just, side um you can't they have said you can plug in any external hard drive for st- archiving purposes they use the word archiving meaning yeah. you can you can store halo 7 8 9 whatever next gen's halo is after infinite whatever game comes out that is going to be only for series x you can store it on the external but you will not be able to play it on the console unless you install it onto the internal nvme solid state that's proprietary or the upgraded proprietary. Either way, it has to be installed on the fast proprietary one to work, period. You can store it on an external, but it won't play off of it. However, 360 games and original Xbox One games, all the backwards compatible shit, will be playable off an external archive. So like my 8 terabyte Seagate, I can plug that puppy into the Series X and play all the older games just fine, it won't be nice and fast like the next gen stuff, but it'll still be playable. And then same exactly. thing with Sony, it'll be playable across the board. It just won't you won't get to enjoy. It's like You're having so- it's like owning a Ferrari and keeping it in first gear. You're not going to know how powerful it really is until you upgrade to second, third, fourth gear. Yeah, you know exactly. So that, that's kind of that's kind of what I wanted to throw out there is that it. It is a doable thing, yeah. and they will allow you to use non-proprietary, but you will suffer if you do not use equivalent or better. Ooh, on a side note for Sony, it does have. It says here it's got an expandable storage slot for NVMe solid state. Yep, and it also has an expandable storage slot for RAM. And yes, external store. Oh, I didn't know about the RAM part, um, but it does also have external storage support for PS4 games only. It says any USB hard drive. 
Um, and then it's not the additional stats I was th- going to throw up there, but I think it does still coincide with Sony's stuff that they have put out there already. On Microsoft stats, it says they are going to have it un- frame rate unlockable up to 120 frames per second. But here's the thing. It's only available at 1080p. They said they will promise 4K 60 frames being the native push and the standard, but you it but you'll be able to change switch your games to 1080p if you want that unlocked 120 frame per second support. So it'll be available for games like shooters like Call of Duty or Halo if you want that PC level frame rate, but it's going to be locked at 1080. Yeah. If you want that 4K 60 frames, ain't bad either. I mean, that's going to be the standard across, I think, both anyway. I think ray tracing is going to be all across both. It's not listed here for Sony, but I believe Sony has stated no, has stated in yeah. that Wired article that it's going to be hardware run. And yeah. Phil Spencer it, came out it, and said the it, same thing for Series X. It, it's going to be in capable, but I don't know if it'll necessarily be pushed at launch. Right. Um, a side note, I haven't heard as much from Sony, but on the Microsoft side, they, uh, Phil Spencer was quoted as sharing that it will have a variable rate shade, uh, rate shading for more stable frame rates. And what, what they're saying, what they were saying is, um, they've designed the series X to basically, and I don't know how it works on a technical level, but. In layman's terms, he said, it's going to have basically AI smart uh, resolution tracking. Basically, it's only going to fully render things that are within your site. So if if to 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 increase and improve frame rate. So like if there is a canister behind a box, the box in front of you is going to be full fledged 8K or whatever but the canister behind you might be low res until you get in front of it. Do you get what I'm saying? Are you about to bash and turn this down as being false? No, I'm not going to bash it and turn it down as false. I'm going to bash it and turn it down as that is something that PlayStation 4 does already. Huh. Okay. So, so no, no, no. Here, I, mean, I, me, to, I, I don't get why it's a big deal then. No, no, no. What I'm saying, I'm not. No, you asked me if I was going to bash it and turn it down as false, and that's. So, what I'm getting at is, ha, have you watched the Horizon Zero Dawn, um, tech explanations or tech, any of that? No. So Horizon Zero Dawn, what it does is, what your third person camera sees is all that it loads Mm -hmm. and all of that is as high quality as it can be and everything behind you and off to the side that's out of view isn't loaded but the second you start to turn it starts to load and then the stuff off to your left that would disappear just drops off the face and that's the way that spider-man works as well so I'm wondering if so there's our that's uh, already kind of a thing and then now they're realizing that it's it's a great it's a fantastic thing and I feel like more games on other con- like even on the Switch that would be killer like I don't know it'd be it'd be great just across the board Well I don't I don't have any re- I don't know I all I'm saying is, like, I don't know why it hasn't been a thing up to this point, if that's the case, and I don't understand. Basically, what I'm gathering from what you're saying is that uh, Phil Spencer's trying to basically blow sm- smoke up PR's ass uh, to add more additional, like, ooh, look how cool this is, basically. Like, well, it sounds I'm like not... something that should have existed t- eight years ago, because last gen was seven yeah. years old now. I'm not saying that he's... well. Horizon and Spider-Man were kind of like more recent, weren't they? I mean, yes, as far as uh, Horizon Zero Dawn is two years old now. 
Like it's it's two full years old. They just had their two year anniversary last fall. So what I'm getting at is, yes, not, the, the end of the console is... generation is utilized this, but it makes me wonder, like, why is this being touted as a feature for next gen when it's something that's that's been possible for the last seven years? I, it's something you may not have any perspective on. I get it. Well, I do, you're just I'm looking not, at what's I'm there. Not trying to... I'm not trying to be native about it. I'm saying that it's oh, fucking think, awesome. That it's, it's finally going across. It's it's a great thing. It's a good thing. It, It'll be great for ray tracing. You know what I mean? I guess I should put it this way. I guess it's great that they are trying – that I guess Phil Spencer is making this statement as it being a standard from day one for the Series X, even though it's yeah. probably been possible for the last couple of years. Like yeah. I, I bet it's, you it's been possible with the Xbox One X, which is only a couple years old now. Like the the mid generation upgrade, it probably could have been done yeah. in that. But anyway, sure, For sure. Uh, I mean, it cut it cuts down on uh, uh, CPU uh, like consumption and right. yeah. you know drawback. There, it, it's a good thing. I don't know why you wouldn't utilize it. Oh, I know. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, yeah. Anyway, a lot of good things from both sides, period. I, uh, the interesting thing is just maybe it's a cost thing or maybe they thought with with the uh, CPU they're using that they didn't need more than 10, a little over 10 teraflops or that Microsoft is just trying to be super flashy by really pushing the limit. I don't know, but... On, you know, on on the teraflops note, there is a, a a dual banding or a dual. There was something in a side by side comparison with that, where Microsoft is forcing two hard lines there, whereas Sony is doing one solid line, and it's more dedicated towards memory and data transfer to up uh, frame rate and speeds. But hmm. Xbox is trying to boast or do just sheer power. Right. And that's why they're going higher, which allows them to do the split. And the only thing that I want to see between the two is utilization and application of the different splits within the CPU itself, because if it makes a difference of straight speed on PlayStation side, because it's going to be nice for those load times. I've already seen the load times. Oh yeah. And it's going to be, it's going to be fantastic if it keeps constant and keeps true to that. But if the power if you suffer the frame rate on Sony's side, people might go more towards the Xbox for the frame rate. If that's what more people are after. Well, and I think the, I think that only comes down to what your game is. I mean, if you're more into comp and shooters, then yeah, frame rate's going to be king for that. But for the single player adventure like your Horizon Dawns and Spider Man's, I don't think you're going to care too much about frame rate. As long as you got those insane load times and as long as like the story can continue keeping you immersed with no zero to no load times, I think Sony's gonna benefit with their first party single player storytelling versus Microsoft yeah. maybe excelling with like their comp shooters. You know what I mean? Yeah, the multi yeah, the multi Well and that's that's the thing. Sony's been that's one of the things that I've loved about it in the past with Sony is that it's been the, the single player storytell experience with all of their first party titles, as opposed to the, the competitive first person shooter or whatever that has been accessible to both parties, but more widely leaned upon on the Xbox, you know? Uh, yeah. And I will throw this out there. I think, um, Microsoft has been trying to get in front of their, 
you know, their horrendous Xbox One launch seven years ago when they tried to make it all about, it's the everything console, stream your TV shows through it, this, this, and that, and everything but gaming was their focus seven years ago. And they crashed and burned really hard for doing that. And it, I mean, it's a reality back then. They've made huge strides with Game Pass and trying to earn back the love from the community that they had. And I'm just saying this I, out there. I, I'm just saying is like, I would say the only thing that Microsoft, I think Microsoft is in a good spot right now to feel bold, competitively speaking, at least until yeah. show, um, at least until Sony finally flushes out their, their, you know, their cards and shows us their lineup. Because the one thing Sony has said is, they they're guaranteeing and promising there will be exclusive launch titles in order to sell the PS5. They need that in order to sell the PS5 because otherwise, and Microsoft is speaking from a consumer level where they're just like play our games anywhere and there's no exclusives for an entire year. And so, okay, Microsoft, how are you going to sell your Series X if you have no exclusives for it? You're telling me I can play Halo Infinite on my seven year old console? Cool. I'll buy your six hundred dollar console when it goes for half off a year later, like, and that's the thing is that's the difference between the two companies. Sony's playing the traditional uh, play uh, that they've always been good Ooh. at, and they're also sitting on a hundred and twenty million user base as far as console sales. Like they're sitting very comfy as far as player base, and the thing they're relying on is their first party titles, which are huge sellers. Microsoft is trying to rely on the goodwill that they've been building for the last two to three years with their Game Pass, Play Anywhere, blah, blah, blah. And those are good things. They're good for both sides. It's going to be very... Ex and the reason I say it's going to be good and exciting for both sides to have such a wide difference in approach this generation is because competition is good for, for all of us. It may be rough yeah. for it may be rough for the big players who are putting out the plays, but it's good for us, the player, because we are going to get the best from both sides. Well, to like your your point, I that play you know their launch that they had with the Xbox One, where it was the one console all media type thing. Yeah, I feel like the Dreamcast. It was ahead of its time. Like I feel in this instance, <laughs> yeah. like if it were if it were to come out next fall, I feel like that would that would be the the time to do it. You know where you know I can get everything in one place and it's going to be fucking great. That that well, would have been time to do it. I think it would have really. I, I, I think it would have really done well during this pandemic. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> oh, I can get everything in one get, spot. Sweet. <laughs> That's what kind of what I'm getting at is like it it's it was the right idea at the wrong time. Yeah. Is that in, is that instance right there? <laughs> well, it's the I same mean, thing for Sony it, and PS3. It, it, the six hundred dollar idea was okay, but wrong time. <laughs> uh, no, that was. I ma that I'm, was, I'm making a was, joke that can't be defended. I know. Well, <laughs> it. I I I bought into it because I I Oy. loved the. You choke thing, down six hundred. You choke down six hundred, man. I yeah. do. Oof. It, well, it was what I mean, a lot of people did. At Fred, at Fred Myers, six six thirty nine. And here, and here's the thing: it, is like what, this jet, this next gen Xbox is going to potentially be around six hundred bucks. Like with the amount of specs and power, they've Who's the they, who's the group I said both. that Digital Foundry busted it open and showed all the tests and specs like Microsoft partnered with Digital Foundry and said here's what it's capable of and the stats they looked up like for the cost pure cost of parts just parts to get a PC to push the same numbers and stats that the Series X is doing right now and I'm sure because it's comparably similar to PS5 that they're they're saying you'd have to spend close to a thousand bucks, nine hundred to a thousand bucks, to make a PC with the same hardware stats that the Series X is doing. And the same, but and, and Sony said it, 
Sony said that the cost. What? They're going to have to. Both sides are going to have to sell units at a loss and rely on subscriptions. Oh, They're no, going you're to 100%. To. Lynn, you were 100% correct. Like, traditionally, console companies do sell either right at cost or for little to no profit or at a loss. Because yeah. they do have to hope that the sales are made up in games and now subscriptions because that's a thing now you know 10 years ago there wasn't a subscription thing that's similar to today you know playstation now xbox game pass those two things are ecosystems now like like your iphones and androids it's an ecosystem that once you buy into you know they want to they want to try to keep you there and you're going sideways on me right now sir um that's because I'm at six percent. Oh snap! Well, we're we're pretty we're to the tail end here. I figured we could probably wrap up our conversation, dude. Yeah. Um. It worked. I mean, so, I don't. I, it's it's going to come down to either preference or the way that things are utilized. That's what mm-hmm. it's going to come down to. It always has, and in my opinion, I think the only edge. I'm not saying it's a big edge, because because the thing is, is so, Sony's got a, a nice huge mountain of players stacked up here from the last few years, and Microsoft. We don't know where their hill sits next to that mountain, but their goodwill is the only edge Microsoft is kind of clinging to, f- pushing forward into the next gen, which you know is why they're doing the hey. Your old peripherals from Xbox One will work on this. All your old games will be backwards compatible, which now Sony is like pushing really hard <laughs> for backwards compatibility. And not and I don't think they need to to survive, but I definitely think they see a small threat in some fashion. It's not a big threat in my opinion, by any means, but I do think as an industry they see a mild concern for how appealing the Xbox ecosystem is that they are very hard trying to push, which is why I think they're not announcing too much yet because they're trying to finalize a lot of these things. Specifically, backwards compatibility, they came out and said, yes, right now we're reviewing the 100 most popular PS4 games and we're working hard at getting them to work on the PS5. And a lot of people took that as... So we're only going to get a hundred games. And then he recently, Michael Cern came back out and said, no, we are working towards getting the 4,000 games on the PS4 available or, and the PS2 and PS3 games. It's just, and they said it's going to take time. And he was quoted as saying they are running through each of the games, checking for, you know, glitches and hardware compatibility and stuff and making sure I think it's going to be time consuming. And to be honest, like, I know they're trying to fluff it up and say that they're on it, and I think it's it's the hope of PS players that it's all, all right. going to be there at launch. I know it's not going to be there at launch because Microsoft has spent the last seven years curating their backwards compatibility collection. No, hold on. If I can make <laughs> one or two references here, okay. I don't think that it will be tough. I think it'll end up like the Parabola the Rapper remaster. Where it is just an emulator with new skins on it. Well, I'm just think it'll end up I'm like wondering that. why it's been so... Well, I shouldn't say that. I don't think it's been challenging for them. I think well, Sony has just can, ch- purposely chosen not to because they just didn't want to go in that direction. I can tell you what Nick would say. And to be fair, he might be right on the PS4 aspect of it. Is that they wanted to make money off of resales. Oh and sure, Nintendo's king of that. I, I'm not, <laughs> I, on on PlayStation side, I'm not going to knock them, but it's probably what it was, and that's you know, and it's a business move, and they're trying to make money like any business would, and it kind of sucks, but yeah. I love Xbox for the <laughs> fact that they're doing it, doing the list, and it's, it's, it's be... kind of nice. Let's just that throw... Sony doing this now. Yeah. So. Yeah, let's just let's just let's end it with with this thought. Um, 
it's just it's going to be very interesting and exciting to see what each company brings to the table upon console launch and where they go from there. Can I say fingers crossed 2021 year of the consumer? Not for release cuz we've <laughs> cuz cuz of the cuz of the virus a lot and I just got to cover this briefly. A lot of a lot of outlets, journalists, and consumers have been very concerned about are they going to delay the consoles because of manufacturing restrictions with a lot of companies over in China having been shut down due to the virus. Um, Microsoft came out and said they're, they, they still have full intention of releasing on holiday, and I believe Sony has tried to make the same statement. Yeah. Now, I guess the only concern as a consumer is do they have the backing to do that or are they just going to, they don't want to risk delaying things because it will risk a lot of the launch titles also being coming out. And who knows where everyone's at right now? Cause a lot of game developer companies like Bungie have gone to remote work, like working from home and like how close are they going to get some of these games like cyberpunk 2077? They said, we're still on on target for September seventeenth. They claim, even though their whole company, they said they've gone remote work. Did they've, you see that one? Where they've openly admitted that they've gone into crunch. Uh, no, I, I don't want to even get into that right now. But yeah, I, I hear you. But uh, they're 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 being honest. They're saying that they're trying to make. They said that they they're trying made to push a for the, to, yeah. To, to the customer that they didn't want to push it back too much longer, but they are crunch. Which is, and it's, I appreciate it's, the it's fact insane. that they I appreciate the fact that they went remote because of the virus, like to, you know to prevent spread. They've they've made all their employees try to work from home to continue working on it. Uh, it's just you got to think a lot of them don't have. The dev, the dev kits, a lot of them don't have the high end processors in their own home offices. So, like, how much harder are they, or how much long, how much more time are they gonna have to put into rendering stuff or correcting code on their personal computers? And how many of them had access to, you know, take any anything decent from the studio home with them? You know, there's a lot of people working on that project. Hashtag project. You don't. CD Red. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, it's all it's oh, it's all man. it's concern and speculation. That's all we have to offer yeah. here. No, there's no hard cold facts right now, other than we all hope for the best. I, we all hope everyone I will stays say healthy. This. Yeah, I will say this about CD Projekt Red. I don't know if you saw the article, but pairing with Xbox, they did say that if you do get it for the Xbox One, you will be able to get the. The what upgraded the version when when yeah, they when they, they yeah, it does drop when they push for the Series X upgrade of the 4K and all that, I yeah I feel like, I like we briefly it. touched on that in a previous game episode actually because that did come out quite a while yeah. ago, um, them announcing that because anyway, let's try let's, I, let's I have... go ahead. Okay. Lynn. I I haven't seen anything from the Sony side yet, but if they didn't, it would be stupid, and I would be very sad. So I'm just gonna leave it there. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll come back next week and do uh, more more gaming discussions about those mm-hmm. future developments. Uh, I think or revisit revisit some of the stuff we talked about. Uh, Saving we hear anything new in the coming week week or so, but. Guys, um, now is probably the best time for wrap up, uh, so we don't run this show too long into the ground. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I want to end on this positive note, Lynn. That uh, we all want all our listeners and viewers out there to. It sucks right now. It's a crazy time in the world, but you know, stay hopeful, S- stay clean, wash your dang hands, don't be a rebel about it, <laughs> and let. Safe. What? I said, keep it secret, keep it safe. Exactly. Um, you know, but on top of all that, stay positive. Get, get online, game with a friend. Now is like 
the be- if you're stuck at home, now's the best time to be playing online. That's you. That's your oh, best you way of staying socially distant is connecting virtually, guys. Do it. When we're recording this, Iron Banner is still up until Tuesday, so you should uh, bust that out with a friend. Oh, snap. <laughs> but, Lynn, that being said, guys, um, this will do it for this week's uh, Nerdy Essentials. This has been a Gaming Bits episode. This is podcast, I didn't say it at the beginning, this is episode 83. We're, work, we're working our way to 100, guys. Getting there little by little. Working our way downtown. I was going to say that, and then I chose not to, but you gave it to me anyway. Thank you, Lou. <laughs> yeah. So, guys, um, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Find us across all the classic social medias. Go to nerdentialsmedia.com. Dot com. If you must. If you'd like to see everything all in one place or go to youtube.com forward slash C forward slash credentials to get a direct feed of all our gaming content. We've been playing. I I've been playing a lot and, and me and Lynn are about to post our last episode of gears of war three for our couch. Oh. Co-op. I know it's been a long time coming. We're getting into gears four soon and then gears five, hopefully with Matthew provided the pandemic doesn't take us all. Or but, Nicholas. Or Nicholas. Well, yeah, that's that's the goal. That's the goal. All of us in one place online. Guys, we've got a lot of gaming playthroughs coming. Uh, a lot that have been posted. I'm personally trying to do daily game uploads to keep all our viewers out there entertained. So hopefully hopefully you guys could leave a like or a comment or hit subscribe and, sh- and show your support. For content creators around the world, we're trying to keep all people locked in houses entertained. But that being said, yeah, for please lock yourself. Yeah, stay clean, (laughs) wash those hands before and after bathroom use. I'm just kidding. Hopefully, you do that anyway. (laughs) Um, uh, for me and Lynn, this has been your nerdy essentials, and as always, nerds, we'll see you. On the other side. (laughs) I waited extra long to catch it when you said it. There you go. I wasn't sure how long your delay was or if you were purposely waiting longer.